this is Ian Schaefer here with UDA Technologies, and we are just about ready to dive into one of our newest features today, where we're going to be taking a look at receiving and managing project-related emails with the new inbound emails tool in Construction Online. Now, of course, uh, I'll be your host today. Again, my name is Ian Schaefer. I'm one of the senior product specialists, and we've got a team today for the webinar. I've got my colleague Jordan Davis, another product specialist, who will be joining us today. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sydney Dorsey is also going to be providing answers and solutions uh, via the questions that you guys are sending in. She's also going to be forwarding some of those back to me, so make sure you find that questions panel and keep them coming. Today as a special guest, we also have Eric Deaton, who is in charge of making this beautiful new feature available to you guys. And uh, he's going to actually chime in with some of his experiences working with the tool as well. Hi, Hi everyone. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, so again, if you guys would like a little bit of a direct connect, today is your day. Um, and as we're going through and taking a look, of course, the feature itself is really straightforward and, and easy to work with, but the amount of power that this brings to Construction Online is just tremendous. So again, as we're talking about this today, it's all gonna focus on the new email inbox. It is a project-specific email address as well, so anything that anybody on your team receives via email, you just forward it right back in. In fact, you could even set up rules in like an Outlook or a Thunderbird, so it all happens automatically. Now, of course, to begin with, we're gonna take you guys into Construction Online and show you, first of all, where we can find it. Now, of course, uh, as we're working with this, Construction Online is the home to now almost 700,000 users. And as we're working through this platform, that means with all these different people that there's gonna be a lot of projects running in Construction Online at any given point. Uh, I think we're, what are we up to now, Jordan? Like $80 billion in projects daily or something? Yeah, I mean, the most exciting stat to me is that we've pushed over 80 uh, countries worldwide uh, with at least one company using Construction Online. You know, that's a pretty huge achievement. And I'm really excited to have not only this feature, but all the new features that we've been pushing out this summer making its way around the globe, helping people manage these, you know, just unbelievable vast amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And with all those with all those people, with all those moving parts, of course, there's going to be a ton of communication. Mm -hmm. And up until recently, most of that communication was either funneled through the communication portion on Construction Online or, God forbid, directly to one of your team members and then never seen again. Uh, so, of course, here to help answer that particular struggle or resolve that struggle, we've added a lot of great communication tools to Construction Online, and tools like messaging, which helps you manage a lot of your email threads. We've got announcements for direct um, responses and everything like that. But the most important new one that we're looking at today is within specific projects, as we mentioned earlier. When you go to the project, take a look on the communications tab, where you will find a brand new inbound emails section. Now with this inbound email section, when you first clock into it, of course, or when you first open this section up, we get a little brief description here. Um, so as you can see, each project is going to have its own dedicated project inbox. If you switch over to a different job, you'll see different emails, different pieces of correspondence. You've got the ability to resend emails from here. You can, of course, control access to this inbox. So things like supervisors would be able to contribute to, but maybe not see what's going on within with the project, and the all-important receiving attachments. Now, of course, it didn't always look like this. I think, Eric, when we first kind of outlined the design, it was a little bit of a simpler tool. Is that right? Yeah, it was a lot more simple. It was basically just uh, saving the correspondence between it and keeping the more of the text. And then we realized that attachments are going to be a very important process of that. So we you know, put an emphasis on trying to make sure that you can send in with the attachments. So if you guys are emailing plans back and forth with external contacts, you can then store all that information back in Construction Online to really have that open communication with your entire team. Yeah, this also means that you could also do things like email in pictures if you're on the job site and you want to just go ahead and send a quick email in there. Um, sign contracts, hopefully our clients are sending those in. Um, the all important change order confirmation, <laughs> the approval for those, anything, anything at all that you guys can think of, all of that information gets forwarded right in here. And most important for each project, you'll actually find that the email address specific to the project is always going to be displayed here in the top right corner. Now what I would recommend in this case as we're getting started with these is take this email address and save it as a new quote unquote contact in whatever email client you're using. If you're working on your phone, go ahead and load this in as 
you know, in this case, what, which one are we working on? Lot 187, Baldwin Park. So you could just create a contact in your contacts list, either in your phone or your email account, whatever it is. Call it Lot 187, Baldwin Park. Put this in as the email address, and that way whenever you need to forward anything in here to the job, all you have to do is hit forward. This looks the same regardless of what kind of email client you're using as well. So today I'm probably going to open up one of our Gmail accounts. And as I'm signing in to pull up some of those uh, contacts, uh, I do kind of want to mention that we've already had a lot of usage with this new inbound emails inbox. In fact, it's only been live for a short period of time. And Jordan, who's actually uh, our current liaison with most of our new construction online clients, you've, you've been talking about this now nonstop for days. How has this been with some of the people who have been using it already? Yeah, we've had great feedback, Ian. Uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of incoming new clients who are really just getting their you know, hands dirty in construction online for the first time. And part of that involves setting up new users, setting up the first project or two. Uh, it's really different per company, but what I found similar, regardless of whether or not it was a large distributed team, you know, a smaller office with a few people uh, involved on the project, uh, everyone has just got this feature. They just understand how it works and what it does uh, from the very first email that they send across. So, you know, we, we're talking a lot about the setup of the email address and a lot of other things here, but I think what everyone is going to appreciate is in just a moment when Ian actually sends an email to this address, how simple it is. I mean, the feature just works, you know, spot on job. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things we tried to make sure that it was a very simple to use feature and just like any other email inbox that you use and whether that's, you know, Outlook, Gmail, whatever it may be, um, try to make it very similar. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I will absolutely echo that. I think um, the front page here, the design very clearly explains, you know, what the project is all about. Um, if you actually switched uh, project to project, you'd be able to see, you know, each address updates as it stands. Uh, it's it's drop dead simple. You know, we've added a couple of other items into the inbox as well. You know, for instance, you can see here uh, controlling inbound access. Uh, we're not too concerned about sharing our internal project email addresses out with people because, well, as we'll get to in a little bit, uh, you have full control over who can actually send emails into this project. So if you're looking to keep this as a very internal project storage tool uh, to keep track of your own company's communications, that's absolutely under your control. If you want to open up communications and allow other people on the team, say, you know, subcontractors or perhaps even your clients, to be able to share their emails across to copy the contact over, you can give that email address to them as well. Uh, it's a very flexible tool that gives you control over who can send information into this project. You know, and I think that's something that we take very seriously here at UDA Technologies, which is giving you control over your projects. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, as you're working with this too, just a couple of quick notes on, on how easy it is to kind of set up and configure. Um, first of all, we showed you guys where to find this email address earlier. One of the beauties of this though is it is a link. And when you click on this link, it's going to launch your preferred email client. Now, of course, I don't use Outlook on this computer because I didn't want to risk everybody seeing all of the fun Outlook emails that I receive on a day-to-day -day basis. But in this case, you can see that it does pull the information in. And if you are using something like Outlook or just Windows Mail or anything like that, you've got the ability to pull the address right here and create new contacts right away. Take this information and save it directly to your contacts list. Whatever you need to do at this point, it's super simple and straightforward. Information is just provided for you automatically. And then from here, if you choose to, you can even take this and pull it into something like a Gmail. Uh, Sydney has been kind enough to actually already forward me one of the emails from, uh, or one of the comments from the team so far. And if we wanted to take this email address for the project and we wanted to forward it into uh, forward this email into our inbox now all we have to do is just choose the option to forward in fact in this case because I copied it from that link before all I have to do is right click and paste copied it too many times apparently um, and then the email address is available for us now to just send the email off all I have to do now is click send and into the inbox it goes now again the beauty of this is Sydney's provided an email about a project specifically to me directly to me which in the past has meant only Sydney and I can see it. Now with this new inbox, when the information does become available here in Construction Online, 
Now everybody who has access to the inbox will be able to go into and see everything that's happening within it. So again, as we're working through, uh, all of the information is going to be showing up right here. And then you'll be able to pull in all the details and everything else as we work. Now, as you're looking through the information, of course, we're receiving tons of emails at any given time. So Google will probably take a couple of moments to get this over to us. We'll be able to address it from there as well. So as you're waiting to receive these emails, all of the information that you need will also show you some of the details here as we're working through the additional options in this little settings drop down. Now, what this means is we can always come into and approve senders. So as you're kind of looking through and working within this as well, we can just add in some of the additional senders that haven't been included yet, add ourselves in as the contact. In this case, what is the email address that I'm using here? Uh, I Schaefer Gmail, no, I Schaefer UDA at gmail.com. So right now it's not an approved sender, so we just need to come into and add one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I Schaefer UDA at gmail.com, save. And now I will be able to send myself emails into my own inbox using that email address. That's an important one. You'll also notice as you're kind of coming through, you can copy the email address directly through the clipboard for this. You can export the full list of emails to an Excel file, which is of course super important if we wanted to catalog everything that we've received. And again, you'll also be able to refresh the page as you're kind of going through and working with these emails. Now I'm gonna go ahead and resend that email just to make sure that it's getting in where it should be. And then as you're working through the information, it just comes right in and works from there. So then the question comes up, who's able to see the content? Who can actually click into and work within the inbound email section? So for that, the controls are gonna be in a slightly different location. This one, if we come back to the team, you'll actually be able to adjust anybody who can see it in the typical permissions section here. So as you're kind of working in this and working within it, now we've included inbound emails as one of the additional options for how we can control who's able to access this project and the content within the project. Now, of course, as always, you can set default company permissions. This exists now as part of those permissions. If you wanted to go through and set up somebody as maybe an administrator who can always get into and work within these projects, you can do so. Then we don't have to adjust the permissions. For Frank here, he's got limited access and limited controls. So if I want to expand on these, my first move is to allow a, a custom set of permissions for this job. And then we can come into and choose what Frank is allowed to come into and work with. In this case, I want him to be able to include emails, send them in here as well, so he can create new emails. I might also want him to go and pull reports off of this as well, so editing and deleting might be important as part of that process. This allows Frank to be able to come into and contribute to all of our work managing the inbound communication. And again, all of that is gonna take place right here under the company contacts, where you can just go into and adjust some of the additional permissions from there. Now again, as we kind of get back into the inbound emails section, you start to get some additional information as these emails are starting to pop up. Of course, as before, we can open this up and take a look at the question that was sent in earlier. A couple too many forwards there. But uh, so one of the questions that we actually received earlier that Sydney was kind enough to forward to us or include as an email is uh, one here about collaborating with our clients via cost plus contracts and wanting UDA to confirm um, and scroll over a little bit, uh, whether or not we can share the project email with the client. Um, we can support, uh, what are we looking for, fully and openly to support our goals of being transparent with them. Sean. So as you're, as you're working through these, of course, this question has come in. Now we've got some tracking for the question as it's popped up through the project itself. And in this case, when you're collaborating with your clients on, on those projects, this information can be shared, or if you choose to, you can add them to the list of approved senders, and then you'll be able to get them to email directly into the project as well, just like with anything else. And if you choose to, or if you need to, you can always come into and take these emails and resend them, maybe in this case, we can send it out to the client directly. So if we're getting any of these pieces of communication from here, we can not only view the email and all the contents and everything like that that's come in, but we can, end, we can from here also send it out to anybody else that we might not wanna have included. 
Now this is in addition to how they might be able to go into and look at it through Construction Online itself. So as we're working with this, I have on numerous occasions, and Jordan, I'm sure that you've done this too. Eric, hell, you, you've, you've worked with clients directly on yeah. God knows how many times too. We've got a lot of clients, like your clients, who might not want to necessarily log in to see all the content. And this is one of the key reasons why we included the option to resend these emails out as well. So now not only can you share it, not only can they email directly in, but you can send it up, set it up so that you can send them any of the information as well without having to go to five or six different systems or maybe even just two or three. It's all kind of being collected back in here. You can resend them and send them out to anybody else that we're working with on the team. Jordan, you're getting this one. And off it would go. Now, as we're putting this information together, again, all of the information can be sent up, sent out. You can clean it up as much as you like to, just as before. And then when you're working on this, when you're working on this, when you hit send, off she goes. Now, of course, this also will eventually give you a huge list of information that's gonna be available here from the email section. As you're working through this, we need filters in order to go through and kind of navigate this information cleanly. So of course, for these projects, if they're long commercial projects, I know that I've seen some of you guys in there and um, some of you guys have mentioned too that your projects may be multi-year projects in some cases. But as we're working through this, we always wanna give you guys the ability to easily figure out like what kind of time binding you wanna put on these. Like in this case, if I'm looking at the last 90 days, it'll give me three, three months worth of emails to review. But if I know that the email came out sometime around the International Builder Show, this would have been, what, February mm -hmm. this past year? So if I wanted to create a custom date selection, we could adjust that. We could say instead of 5-18-2019, maybe I want to go 02-01-2019 through 03-01. Uh, maybe I remember it coming in around that time. I don't remember exactly when, but there you go. Maybe we want to do that instead. So this would give us a custom date, date range instead. As we're looking through that, it's obviously it's going to go through and adjust what we would see. And so in this case, it would go back to an empty list and we don't need to show you guys more empty views. So I'm going to stick with the last 90 days. But uh, as you're looking through that, again, you can sort through, you can sift through, you can find the person that it came from or that it was sent through. All of that information is going to be available in here. In fact, you can also search for emails by subject. So if this gets huge, and you guys wanted to find some specific topic, maybe in reference to a change order about um, uh, fencing that needs repair or something like that, you could do that. You could do change order dash fencing, and it would give you any emails that reference change order and fencing in the title. So again, there's tons of ways to be able to go through and organize this project information, to catalog the project information, and of course, probably the most important thing to me is the ability to take that list of all of the email and the content and export it to Excel so that we can then save a hard copy as we're finishing out this project. Um, now, of course, as you're working through this, you guys will be able to get into and start working with this today. For all of you who already have a Construction Online account, all you need to do in order to access this new feature is open up your Construction Online account, go to a project where you'd like to see this information start to show up, under communication, you will find the new inbound emails portion of the project. And for any of the, the information that you guys would like to add to or catalog in this project, you'll be able to find all of that detail right there. What do we have another? Ah. <laughs> now you'll also notice, by the way, that if anybody is trying to email into you guys, this is actually something that I just found out about now, which is really, really handy. Um, but if anybody is ever trying to email in, and for whatever reason that information is not showing up, you guys will also get a notification about this as well. Um, so here's where it failed the first time that I tried to send. The beauty of this, though, is it actually shows you, or it'll notify you as the owner of the project, of everything that's supposed to be going on in the project and whether or not you have blocks in place. So if the question comes up from one of your guys and he says, yeah, I keep trying to forward it in, but nothing happens. Well, there's the information. This will tell you if he's trying to push the information in. And maybe it's a personal email address that he's using. Or maybe he's got the wrong ID for the project, in which case it's an easy, easy thing to address. All they need to do is just come back into this portion. And once again, 
copy the email to the clipboard, I highly, highly recommend creating your contact in your contacts list for each project. This eliminates the possibility of typing in the numbers wrong or something like that. It makes it super, super easy to get the information right. Now, uh, one of the other things that uh, we were talking about earlier, Jordan, just because I know internally we get a lot of emails as well. Um, so there's always the possibility that you guys might be getting hundreds of emails a day. I hope not, but we do, so we kind of know what it is. This makes us kind of experts on creating rules for emails that we're receiving. Um, Jordan, if you don't mind, could, could you take a minute to um, maybe talk about how you might use the rules in something like Outlook or, or Thunderbird to streamline this email entry process into inbound emails? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, if anybody's watching and they would like to discuss, we're not Outlook support slash specialists slash technicians, but I know my way around the Outlook rule set. Uh, interestingly, um, I don't know if we can actually pull Outlook over onto this screen that we're looking at here, uh, but we can talk about the concept. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, what you can do is, if you look inside of Outlook, specifically this would be Outlook installed on a desktop computer, uh, you'll find under the home menu that there's a menu for rules. If you open up the rules menu, you can actually find an option to create a rule. If you just look through the settings, you'll find that you can set a setting that's something like whenever I move an email to a specific folder, you have to create this inbox folder first, but you could create, say, the lot 187 Baldwin Park folder. Anytime that I move an email into this folder, forward a copy to whatever the address is. Now, if you had done your homework and set this up as a contact, you could just pick that contact from the list in Outlook. Uh, this also is true uh, inside of Gmail. So if you're a user of G Suite or you're using Gmail to manage some of your uh, email settings or, or services here, uh, you can also achieve close to the same thing. Uh, the terms are slightly different, probably for very obvious reasons, uh, but you can head over to the forwarding section here and set up a few different rules and filters so that eh, with the same type of idea, instead of using a folder, you'd use something like a label. So you would create a label for Lot 187 Baldwin Park. Then you could label any messages that belonged to that project and then have that actually forward across to this email address as well. Uh, both of these options are fairly simple to set up. Uh, if you are looking for kind of a step-by-step -step to move forward with this, I would recommend going to your favorite search engine, searching for email client, forward rules, folder, something like that. I promise if you put a search in, these engines are smart enough now, they'll figure out what you're trying to do and they will yeah. tell you how to do it. And if you still need some help, call me, call us. You can always reach us at 800-700-8321. We would love to talk about that. Now, one last thing, because I saw someone had asked, can we control the actual email address. Now the short answer is no. This address is fixed. It is tied directly to the project itself. It's a unique ID stored inside of the system. But what you can control is everyone else's perception of this information in your company. Now there's two things you can do right off the bat. The first one is you can take this email address and create a construction online contact and then send a message to everyone. <laughs> Funnily enough you could even copy that contact on the message and tell them how to send messages in to the project. Now, of course, you probably would only tell people who are approved to send messages. Otherwise, you'll get all sorts of questions about that email that Ian was just showing off a few minutes ago about the uh, bounced or rejected emails. Uh, the second option is uh, to send a message out to everyone, telling them to add this email address with the contact name of this project, give them a little bit of context about what it does and why you expect them to use it, and then start thinking you know, long-term. Think about how you would want to search for specific emails about specific topics. You can control and, and put in place a very simple, uh, very repeatable process in your company to handle information tracking, not only for the short term, but for the long term as well. And that will pay off, seriously. Anything that you can do to get more information out of the current set of emails that you have the faster you can find information when questions arise on a job site, which that never happens, right, Ian? No, never. Yeah. <laughs> Look, the faster you can find this information, the faster you can keep moving forward, the faster that you can help people, the faster that you can grow your business. Mm -hmm. Now, to add to that, too, 
when you do go through and take a look at some of those rules, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of setting up Outlook rules. Um, what you guys can't see and what I'm hopefully never ever going to accidentally show you <laughs> is I probably have about mm, 100 different folders in my Outlook for all the different content that I receive, and it could be anything. Um, but what, again, what I recommend to kind of build on what Jordan was saying, I would also recommend setting up a rule that forwards any emails from your client on this project directly into the project itself. Now, you're still going to get it in your inbox just as normal. And everybody else is going to have questions about what the client is emailing you directly. This just speeds up the process of having your team of people help that customer in, again, near real time. Uh, instead of waiting for you to spot the email that's come in, that email is going to show up here in the inbox for everybody to be able to take care of. And that way, if it's a relatively simple or straightforward question that your site super could respond to, they'll get the little notification, the little buzz. They can come in, take a look at the email that was sent, and then maybe they can reach out to the client directly and just provide that insight. Or if, for whatever reason, like you were talking about earlier, the client just keeps sending emails to the site supervisor, again, one of the rules that we used to have in place uh, for some of the projects that I've worked on in the past was the super doesn't directly work with the customer on anything. Not change orders, not small adjustments, not even questions about the project. Their response to every single question from the client has always been the same. That's a great question. Here's the number for my project manager. He's the person that you want to reach out to to ask any questions like this. He'd love to hear from you. Give him a call. Same thing could happen here. Site Super doesn't necessarily have to field the questions themselves. They get kicked back immediately. That way the project manager can come in and do an excellent job making sure that you're managing that customer's expectations and provide all of those, again, great insights from them as well. So all of this information is going to be able to, to forward in and with the right set of rules, you guys can have all of this automating beautifully. For anything that slips by your rules, as always, you can just forward it in there as well. Now, don't forget, don't make the same mistakes that we have. Always make sure that you come into and take a look at your managed approver, uh, manage approved inbound senders and approve anybody that you guys might want to have on there. By default, it's going to be including your company users who are on this job. So as you're working through this, you'll be able to see most of that information coming in. And so, again, as you're putting this information in, you can always adjust this information as needed right here. Just click on the little settings wheel and go to Manage Approved Inbound Senders. As you're setting it up, again, to kind of reiterate this point from Jordan earlier, you can copy it to your clipboard to add it in as a new contact or simply click on that email. It just opens, opens your default email client automatically. And then from here, you can actually use some of the standard tools in your email client to add this as a new contact so that you can, again, speed up that process. It makes it extremely easy. And to that point as well, to avoid any misunderstandings about what this project uh, ID or address is, label it according to the project. That'll become habit for you and your team so that you guys will always just be forwarding those things back to the project and we can catalog and collect everything else for you there. Now it looks like we've got a lot of other great questions in here as well. Um, things that are coming in for various different topics. And of course, as always, we'll try to handle as many of them as we can. Don't forget, guys, if you do have any additional follow-up questions and you have anything else that you guys want to see within this, not only will you be able to send the questions to us here through the questions panel in GoToWebinar, just go take a look at that. There's an area that should be clearly marked questions. You can type those in and send them over. Uh, it looks like Sydney's been doing a fantastic job keeping on top of those, but in case you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with anybody or get a little extra insight on how these might work for you and your team, you can always give us a call here at 1-800-700-8321, or you can send us an email at info at uda1.com or support at uda1.com, or if you really wanted to, here's a project ID that you could send your emails into. Unfortunately, you're not on my approved senders list. So make sure that you send them to info or support instead. Those will get to myself and my whole team, and we'll be able to field any of those questions or give us a call anytime. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, for now, though, that covers all the standard content that we have for the webinar. We are now moving on to the questions portion of the webinar. So again, if you have them, send them my way. If you guys are curious about what other people are asking, stick around. We'll be going over some of these questions right now. But for everything else, don't forget, we do have the next in our series of webinars available. Let's get back to the webinars page. Um, we're going to be... I thought that said something else. Next Thursday, we're going to be taking a look at five reports that you guys should review every single week on Construction Online. 
Um, so if you guys are interested in figuring out which ones we recommend and some of the reports that you guys should be reviewing on a regular basis, don't forget, join us here online next Thursday at 3 o'clock Central where we'll, we are going to be touching on and talking about all of these additional tools and resources that are available in Construction Online to provide that insight that you should be reviewing every single week. So for everything else, if you guys are good, thank you very much for joining us. We hope to talk to you guys again this time next week at the latest. For everything else, though, we are now moving on to questions. Now along those lines, give us just a moment. We're going to review some of the questions that have come through so far. Uh, so... <laughs> Looking like we've got a couple of them. Again, Sydney, if you would, do us a favor and just flag anything that you think would be fun for us to talk about as well. It looks like she's, she's too good at answering every question. Um, yeah, and, and Jordan, you've already covered some of these as well. Like uh, the email address, questions about recognizing the email address. That's For me, that's an easy one to answer because, again, those email addresses have to be unique every time. So we like to use the project, uh, the project ID for that, as you've seen. Labeling those when you're creating the content is a super simple, straightforward way to be able to control what everybody looks at when they see. It's also not typically something that's going to get passed out to everybody associated with the project. Usually you want to control who's sending things in. Otherwise, you might get a lot of goofy pictures of feet next to holes in walls or something like that. <laughs> you know, I joke, but that's the easiest way that some of the guys that I've worked with have been able to measure how big of a problem it is. They'll put a hand next to it or a foot next to it. Or if they took like a, um, if somebody ended up punching a hole in a wall using some big piece of equipment on the job site, they might have the short guy standing next to the hole in the wall to gauge how big it is. Again, I've seen all sorts. And with those attachments coming in, sometimes you kind of want to control that flow of information, which is a good reason to, to kind of control who's on them as well. Yeah, well, and there's a place for that information. That right? is, this is also true. <laughs> uh, in those project logs is probably a better home for some of those interesting <laughs> pictures that come along with them. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, we have a couple of questions about copies of emails. Normally for a situation like that, I would probably recommend setting a policy internally about that. You could end up with a couple of different copies of an email. Of course, at any given point, you guys can go in and kind of clear that out a little bit if you needed to. There's an easy option in the, in the project itself to adjust which ones we keep and which ones we clear. So you can always delete those. Along the same lines, you can also adjust how many you see per page. So if you think there's a whole lot going on, you can always uh, kind of simplify your dates, perhaps, if you need to clean it up a little bit. As a personal preference, I would actually recommend letting people send duplicates in. I am always an advocate of having a little bit more information than we need than a little bit less. If we end up trying to put a policy in place where only one person sends emails in, then what will end up happening is we lose important emails because they think it's somebody else's responsibility. Again, take them all. Take the duplicates. Keep them in there. You can go through and periodically clean them up as you need to, but, uh, but again, you'll see them there. Uh, a follow-up question to this is how do we handle email attachments? Well, as you're forwarding those emails in, all the attachments are going to show up here on the right as well. From here, you can click on those email attachments to preview them or see any of the content. Um, as you're previewing, I suspect that you guys will also be able to take those and move them into the project as well, where you can see them in the file section. Or more importantly, as you're looking through like an overview, you'll see all the documents and files coming in together. So it's a great way to do that. Most importantly, though, we do give you the ability to preview the email attachments right here um, so that you can see it associated with the email that it came with. Great question, though. Great question. Um, so the next one, can you create an email in this feature? It seems like all we're doing is managing incoming emails. And uh, that's exactly right. We are only managing incoming emails here in the inbound emails box. Outgoing emails are usually channeled through the messaging feature instead. Now with messaging, it works very similarly to how we were just taking a look at with the inbox, with the exception of this is more of an outbox. Um, so as you're working with this one, you can create a new email conversation here. You'll be able to label your email conversations here, basically putting in your subject line, still associated with the same project, choose who you want to send it to. All of that information is going to be here. From here, you can also draft your emails and include attachments, just like you could before. When you post, this starts the conversation 
all replies to these emails automatically come back into the message system there as well. Uh, so as you're working through, you'll be able to see the information coming and going and uh, still be able to access it all. Sometimes you will find that your team is pretty gung-ho about forwarding these emails back into the inbound email box too. You know, I don't hate it. As you're working through that, from the inbound email box, you have the ability to, again, control with the various different filters what information you're looking at at any given point. So just like with multiples or duplicate emails, if you have them forwarding those conversations back in, or if your rule picks up that conversation and forwards it back in again, you're just adding some more information that's gonna show up as part of that report. So again, super simple way to get those outbound emails going with the added bonus of having your team being able to push those back in here too so you can kind of double dip. Um, mm, question here, next one up, we're gonna go with, can we download and, <laughs> Sydney's already got that one answered, but we're gonna ask it anyway. Can we download and or zip the emails to archive them? Now we kind of touched on this one a little bit before because you have that ability to generate that report. Um, so with most of that information, again, as you're getting a ton of information here with the emails, you can always take this list and export it to Excel as well. What this is gonna do is it's basically just gonna take the full table of all the information that you guys are working with, put it into a handy uh, Excel spreadsheet, which you can then reference back to at any time. Uh, I'm actually glad, Eric, that you chose the Excel option in this case, rather than trying to have each message individual, because in here, is, as with most standard functions in Excel, you've got the ability then to sort all of the columns and everything like that by dates or by sender. You can do all your groupings and everything like that. Again, it's a beautiful way to be able to get into and organize all that information as well. Um, so let's see, what else has Sydney not already tackled? Um, there's a question here about the mobile app, unfortunately. I don't have this screen set up to cast the app. Conveniently, the app is free to download. So if any of you guys have any questions about it, go download Construction Online, all one word from either the Google Play Store or the App Store if you guys are iOS users, and you'll be able to get into and take a look at any of the things that we're talking about today um, or through the app form. Most of, most of that is still gonna be messaging. You're probably gonna be using messaging for that. Um, or through the app, you could always, or through the standard mail apps, you can just forward in. So maybe you just use that to, to um, add contacts to your mail contacts list. Reading and talking is hard. <laughs> <laughs> might, I might need you to take over for a couple of these while I kind of sift through. By the way, guys, I love these questions that are coming through. You guys are sending in a lot of fantastic questions um, and, and uh, I certainly appreciate these coming in. Uh, is the... They're going faster than I can keep up with now, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so we're, we're going to keep going. Uh, maybe we'll alternate now. So I'm going to start with here. I'll read the question off, and then as I'm going, you can prep your next one. Um, so is there a way to move attachments to the Files tab? Um, now, of course, with most of this, as well as you guys are, are adding those attachments in, you'll be able to uh, uh, open them up, preview them, and then from there... Uh, is it a right click? Yeah, it's a right click functionality. Same as if you're, you know, working in the files tab. You can save those to the project, put those, you know, images into an album, um, like PDFs into a different folder. Um, give you all the different ability to kind of control where those attachments end up in Construction Online. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do we have next? Next question up. Um, just tackle this one. What does the Excel report look like? Uh, you had it just a moment ago. Oh, I think I shut it down. Did yeah. you? Yeah. We can get it back open. Yeah, that's well here. I could just do this. Export it again. <laughs> it doesn't take but a half a second to generate because we only got one email. Yeah, that's true. Um, so again, as we open it up, you'll be able to see some of the contents here. Um, most of this information, again, is, is just going to catalog what we see and what we have. Um, so as you're working through this lockdown for editing, um, it's basically giving you, again, what we're looking at here on the screen itself. And uh, once again, it's just cataloging most of the details for us to work with. Uh, what's the email address that shows on the outbound emails? Is it generated for each project? Um, looks like I might have skipped one, but that's okay. Um, so for messaging, as you're working with this, the, the messaging feature is going to send the, the inbound the email address that it's sending from will be 
no reply at uda.us and it's going to say in the send line sent from construction online on behalf of Eric Deaton mm -hmm. uh, as you guys are working with there so again as you're looking through this it's going to have the name of the sender in the send line but not the sender's email address the personal email address is is not what we're cataloging and again we do that so that we can help manage or maintain those emails that are coming back in as well. So if your client is receiving those emails and they just hit reply to the email, the reply comes right back into messaging. And depending on how you have your rules set up, it might kick back into the inbound email box as well. Uh, but again, most of that information is going to be storable or settable in there as well. Uh, let's see, do we have a couple of... Yeah, that's so that's the sent, the sent email box. Um, she is, she is... She's answering your questions faster than I'm reading them. <laughs> Sydney, you're doing a fantastic job, and thanks for that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's go. Yes, ex exporting does. The exporting, again, it's based on the view that you're looking at. So most of what you guys will be exporting by default will just be a list of the emails. Um, again, subject lines and things like that as well. So as you're looking through, bear that in mind as you guys are working with this. Um, the report or the export may be adjusted slightly. Um, for now, though, again, just take a look at those. Most of the information, though, you're going to want to keep online anyway. With the new models for Construction Online, there's no reason to ever archive or delete any of your projects on Construction Online. Now that everybody's got a certain number of project starts, your project could, could live online for a long time, which means that the information could always be available to you here as well, uh, which gives you just a little bit more to work with. Uh, looks like this is a question about receiving the email and then attaching it directly to some feature in Construction Online. And uh, while that is a great question and an interesting thought process, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys might be getting a, a little ahead of us here. What we're doing right now is we're just gathering the communication together first. Now, what I love about that question is it is kind of showing some next steps and some, some additional possibilities. Again, we love this kind of feedback. So as you guys are kind of working through this, don't be shy about sharing that. Uh, so we would really love to have that and any other usage for the feature um, provided as well. I guarantee that Jordan's probably going to be reaching out to every single one of you guys to talk about this too because he's been pretty thrilled about what we have so far. And of course, as always, we want to make sure that we keep getting some more of the details here as we work as well. Now with that, I do think that that's actually all the time that we have for you today. We planned on keeping this one pretty short and sweet. Um, and it looks like you guys are probably as excited as we are that this is going live now. Um, we love all the questions and everything. And for those of you guys who had questions that we weren't able to get to, don't forget, you can always reach out to us after the webinar at um, either by phone, one 800 Seven hundred eight three two one, or again via email, either info at uda1.com or support at uda1.com. And as always, we have recorded this webinar, so you can always check back in as, as well back on the webinars page. Not my webinars. Where did we put it? Mm -mm -mm, there it is. Uh, if you do take a look, come down to the on-demand webinar recordings. You'll see this one popping up here in the very near future, probably in the next couple of days, right here under the on-demand recordings where you can watch this and any other webinars that we've hosted. They're all going to be available to you in this nice handy dandy list going back through time where you can see all the great things we've had to talk about. And keep an eye on this page too. Bookmark it if you would because we're going to be revealing a lot of new features as they're released on Construction Online. Some of the other fun ones that we have to talk about in addition to things like the um, five reports that you should be watching every week. We've done some major enhancements here, great, great new features coming with the scorecard, including automated emails from the, from the uh, scorecard feature. So that one's coming up soon. We'll also be here in the near future talking about some of the new major enhancements to some of the features like estimating, where we're adding in a third level of detail. It looks like a lot of you guys that we have joining us for the webinar today may also be familiar with our Construction Suite desktop software which has had leading industry most powerful estimating features available across all project management solutions and we're actually taking some of those features and functions and applying them to construction online. I'm not going to tell you who's in charge of that one right now because I don't want him to receive too many requests as we move forward 
But that's going to be an available webinar that we're going to be doing soon. We're also going to be taking another look at Redline Plan Room where we're showing you guys some of the amazing new features that we've been able to implement, like comparing revisions on those as you guys up upload new sheets where you can see some of the changes that have been made on those pages or some of the other incredible new features that we've got available to you guys there as well, like callouts. Some of these features are going to be available, and we'll be showing you guys how to take advantage of those in Redline soon. Um, but again, this is the all-important webinars page or the events page, so make sure that you guys bookmark this and join us next week as we talk about additional reports and for every week thereafter, I hope, as we talk about all the great new enhancements that we've released over the summer and moving forward. Again, for everything else, though, guys, I am, I think, done. So once again, my name is Ian Schaefer. It's been a pleasure working with you guys today. Uh, and hopefully we'll talk to you next week. And until then, guys, thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care.